Without further ado, I'll pass it over to you, Minister. Merci, mesdames et messieurs. Bonsoir et merci d'être avec nous. Aujourd'hui, le Canada a conclu sa campagne en vue d'obtenir un siège au sein du Conseil de sécurité des Nations unies. Le résultat n'est pas celui que nous avions espéré, mais nous sommes fiers de la campagne que nous avons menée au cours des quatre dernières années. Je tiens à remercier tous les pays qui ont appuyé la candidature du Canada. Par la même occasion, je veux féliciter nos concurrents, la Norvège et l'Irlande, ainsi que le Mexique et l'Inde, pour leur élection au sein du Conseil de sécurité des Nations unies. Pour le Canada, cette campagne nous a permis de renouveler et de resserrer plusieurs de nos relations bilatérales. Au cours des quatre dernières années, nous avons établi d'innombrables contacts et renforcé des amitiés à travers le monde. Nous avons réuni, nous avons écouté et nous avons appris de chacun des pays à travers le monde avec qui nous avons eu des contacts. Nous avons noué aussi de nouvelles alliances, qui ont ouvert de nouvelles avenues de coopération afin de relever des défis mondiaux et d'accroître la place du Canada dans le monde. Grâce à cette campagne, notre pays est aujourd'hui plus présent que jamais à travers le monde. Comme le premier ministre Trudeau l'a déclaré à maintes reprises, l'obtention d'un siège au sein du Conseil de sécurité des Nations unies n'a jamais été une fin en soi mais plutôt un moyen d'atteindre nos objectifs. Le Canada, bien évidemment, continuera à jouer un rôle de chef de file et continuera à défendre et promouvoir nos valeurs et principes sur toutes les tribunes. Nous continuerons à travailler avec la communauté internationale afin d'accroître la coopération mondiale et bâtir un monde plus pacifique et plus inclusif. Un monde qui préconise une paix durable, lutte contre les répercussions des changements climatiques, favorise la sécurité économique, fait avancer l'égalité des sexes et renforce, bien évidemment, le multilatéralisme. En conclusion, j'aimerais adresser des remerciements tout particuliers à l'ensemble du corps diplomatique canadien, autant à Ottawa qu'aux quatre coins du monde. Je tiens également à remercier notre premier ministre, Justin Trudeau, pour son leadership et son soutien tout au long de la campagne. Enfin, je veux remercier le directeur. Cette incroyable campagne n'aurait jamais été possible. Notre ambassadeur auprès des Nations unies, André Blanchard. Cher Marc-André, il ne fait aucun doute que ton engagement infatigable, ta personnalité et ton directeur de cette campagne serviront de modèle à des générations de futurs diplomates. Je crois pouvoir parler au nom de tous les Canadiens et les Canadiens en disant que toi, l'ambassadrice adjointe Blais et toute l'équipe avez accompli un travail formidable. Merci, mesdames et messieurs. So, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and thank you for being with us here today. Today, Canada concluded its campaign for a on the UN Security Council. The result may not be the one we had hoped for, but we are proud of the campaign we conducted over the last four years. I want to thank all of the countries who supported Canada in its bid to the Security Council. I also want to take this opportunity to congratulate our two competitors, Norway and Ireland, for their election to the Security Council of the United Nations. opportunity to congratulate Mexico and India for their election to the Security Council. For Canada, this campaign allowed us to renew and strengthen many of our bilateral relations. Over the we made countless connections at all levels and cemented friendships that will last for years to come. We convened, we listened, and we learned from other countries around the world. We forged new alliances, which opened up 
open new doors for cooperation to address global challenges and further increase Canada's place in the world. As Prime Minister Trudeau said on many occasions, a seat on the Security Council was never an end in itself. It was merely a mean to an end. Canada will continue to play a leadership role and continue to defend and promote our values and our principles around the world. We will continue to work with the international community to advance global cooperation and build a more peaceful, inclusive, and sustainable world. A world that furthers sustainable peace addresses the impacts of climate change, promotes economic security, advances gender equality, and strengthens multilateralism. In closing, I would like to extend a special thanks to all of Canada's diplomatic corps, both at Global Affairs in Ottawa and across the globe. I also want to thank our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, for his leadership and support throughout this campaign. And finally, I want to thank the diplomat without whom this campaign would never have been possible, our ambassador to the UN, Mr. Marc-André Blanchard. Marc-André, your unrelenting engagement, your personality and dedication to this campaign will no doubt serve as a model for generations of future diplomats. I think I speak on behalf of all Canadians when I say that you and Deputy Ambassador Blair and your entire team have gone above and beyond the call of duty. And tonight, every Canadian should be grateful for the work you did. I'll be happy to take your questions now. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Ministre. Nous allons passer donc immédiatement aux questions euh, des journalistes sur l'appel téléphonique. We will immediately go to questions of journalists on the phone. Operator, over to you. Thank you. Please press star one at this time. If you have a question, n'hésitez pas à appuyer sur étoile 1 pour toute question. First question, la première question, nous vient de Mélanie Marquis de la Presse canadienne. À vous la parole, please go ahead. Bonjour, euh, Monsieur Champagne. Bonjour, euh, Mme Marquis. Bonjour. Qu'est-ce qui, euh, Denis, pourquoi euh, le Canada n'a pas été élu pour ce stage? Écoutez, d'abord, je pense que ce soir, c'est l'occasion de remercier les femmes et les hommes qui ont travaillé d'arrache-pied au cours des quatre dernières années qui ont fait la promotion du Canada à travers le monde. Euh, il y aura beaucoup de temps euh, pour poser ces questions-là, pour y répondre, pour réfléchir sur euh, les leçons qu'on a apprises durant cette campagne-là. Mais ce soir, je voudrais vraiment prendre le temps euh, de remercier ces hommes et ces femmes qui ont dédié près de quatre ans de leur vie à faire la promotion du Canada. Et je pense que comme Canadiens et Canadiennes, on doit être fiers de leur travail. Mais, donc, j'ai une question de suivi. Votre réaction, M. Champagne, à cette défaite, quelle est-elle? Puis, euh, ça veut dire quoi pour le gouvernement qui a tellement misé sur le, le retour du Canada sur la scène internationale? Puis, un grand pan de ça, c'était de revenir euh, aux, aux Nations Unies avec un statut. Ben, je vous dirais que le, le Canada va continuer à être engagé. Le Canada, c'est un grand pays. On est membre du G7, du G20, de la francophonie, du Commonwealth, de l'OTAN, de l'Organisation des États euh, de l'Amérique. Écoutez, on va continuer de faire valoir nos principes, nos valeurs. On va continuer de s'engager sur les changements climatiques. On va continuer euh, de faire la promotion de l'égalité des sexes, la sécurité économique. Il y a beaucoup d'enjeux où le Canada va peut continuer euh, de faire la différence et va continuer de faire la différence. Évidemment, on l'a toujours dit, un siège au sein du Conseil de sécurité, ce n'était pas une fin en soi. C'était une tribune additionnelle euh, pour les Canadiens et les Canadiennes de faire entendre leur voix. Mais moi, l'engagement que j'ai pris quand j'ai parlé aux différents ministres des Affaires étrangères, et c'est la même chose avec le premier ministre, c'était d'amplifier la voix de ces pays-là, que ce soit dans les Caraïbes, que ce soit dans les îles du Pacifique, que ce soit en Afrique, que ce soit au Moyen-Orient. Et cette voie-là, ben, on va continuer de la faire valoir sur la base des principes et des valeurs qui sont chères aux Canadiens et aux Canadiennes. Thank you, merci. The next question is from Glenn McGregor from CTV News. Avez-vous la parole? Please go ahead. 
Uh, Minister Champagne, um, thank you for taking questions. Could you explain why you think you lost? Where, where did the support not come from that you were counting on? Like I said, you know, there, there'll be ample time to reflect and, and think about the lessons learned. Uh, tonight, I wanted to put the focus on the men and women who have dedicated uh, more than four years of their lives uh, to promote Canada and, and to raise the voice of Canada in all uh, the various forums that we can. Uh, but with respect to the analysis of what may have happened and lessons learned, uh, I may ask Ambassador Blanchard to give you uh, more of the feedback on that, but rest assured and Canadians who are watching us will continue uh, in our engagement across the world. I think that Canada is ever more present now. Uh, our influence is greater. Uh, we have reconnected with countries around the world. I think the Prime Minister uh, probably contacted more than 50 world leaders in the last few weeks. I certainly talked to probably 130 of them. Uh, the missions around the world have been engaged. This was Team Canada. Uh, this was not a prime minister or a foreign minister or an ambassador. This was Canada. Uh, and we will continue to promote Canada in all these forums. But more specifically uh, to your question, I'll ask Ambassador Blanchard to give you a bit more color. Ambassador? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I, uh, you know, uh, at the UN, uh, this, uh, the, the race for the uh, Security Council in the Western European and others group that we belong to, the regional group that we belong to, is always very, very competitive. The, tights are, the, the races are tight, and uh, this year was no difference. And then when you have races, a, race, a race like the one we were in, with three great, really, three great countries that have a lot to bring uh, to the world and to the UN, it's a difficult choice for, for, the, the, for the countries and the member states. And each country has 193 different reasons why they would support one country or another. And uh, this is, uh, the, you know, like this is the politics of the UN that is very tricky and very difficult and, and complex. And we will have plenty of time to actually look at that in, in the near future and analyze this. Uh, but the role of Canada at the UN has been uh, the engagement of Canada at the UN has been enhanced so much over the last few years in this campaign. And this is, you know, the Can Canada is really a leader in so many fronts. Food security, uh, climate change, economic security, women and girls, all issues that are so relevant in the world today. Uh, look at the situation of COVID-19. So that will bring also the, the role of Canada tomorrow morning at the UN we, I will go back to the UN and be as enthusiastic and as passionate about the role of Canada and the role of the UN in the world. We need the UN more than ever in the world. We need Canada within the UN also to be, remain a very important player because a lot needs to be done and Canada make, can make a significant difference on many of those topics. Just as a follow-up, uh, Ambassador, do you think those messages the emphasis in the Canadian campaign on climate change and on uh, women and girls and gender equality didn't resonate with the, with the countries that you needed support from, particularly developing countries, where things like peacekeeping and, crucially, foreign aid, the percentage of GDP that we contribute to foreign aid is below uh, Norway's. Do uh, you think those were maybe factors that we really just gave the wrong message in this campaign? Well, let me just take... Uh whether you talk about climate change or whether you talk about gender equality, I can assure you, Glenn, that uh, to all the foreign ministers I've talked to around the world, those are things that matter. Uh, we know that climate change is the next big, uh, the, the next big uh, looming crisis. We know that gender equality is something that is long due that we need to promote. Those things will continue to be cornerstone of our foreign policy. Uh, and, and I can tell you that... Uh, these uh, topics uh, that we put forward, whether it's about economic security, multilateralism, they will remain pillars of our foreign policy. This wasn't an NNM. This was only another place, another tribune uh, for us to be speaking loud. And, and we will continue to do that. But uh, I'll let Ambassador Blanchard to give you a bit of color with respect to uh, the discussions here at the UN on that. Ambassador? Well, it, as I said before, for example, on, uh, on the role of financing, Canada is perceived as a global a world leader on, on financing, on innovative financing. And uh, we had, uh, to a few weeks ago, the Canadian Prime Minister who co co convened with the Secretary General and the Prime Minister of Jamaica 
uh, 51 heads of states who came. This was the biggest event in the UN, uh, convening so many heads of states outside of the uh, you know, annual General Assembly, and on a topic that is actually at the core of what is needed now in the world, which is thinking about the financing post-COVID. So I would say that the, the really the issues that Canada has put, have put has put on the table have resonated to a certain extent. Yes, we didn't get the result that uh, we were looking for. On the other hand. That doesn't mean that the agenda has been dismissed or rejected. Quite the contrary. I think there was a lot of engagement. And as I said, you know, you have 193 voters in 193 countries that vote. Right? Each of the countries have a different reason to support one country or another. And I was also want to underline the fact that this is, uh, you know, some, some editors have been written all, all over the world on this uh, race saying that this is the toughest competition in, in at the United Nations, and this 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 election here uh, was uh, like uh, perceived by everyone as very very competitive and very tough. And Canada was very com very competitive, uh, but we were uh, also against two countries that uh, have their strengths and uh, had also something to offer. And uh, but it's it's I just want to say that the agenda that we were running on. Uh, is really relevant and has resonated and is the one that we should continue to put forward because it's, um, it, the, the, you know, we all need to work better uh, together the, as a world on these issues. Thank you, merci. The next question is from uh, Christian Noël de Radio-Canada. Vous la parole? Please go ahead. Bonjour, c'est une question pour euh, Monsieur Blanchard et pour Monsieur Champagne aussi. Euh, le Canada a mis les gros. Euh, on a fait moins bien que M. Harper, qui lui n'avait pas fait campagne. Comment est-ce que vous prenez cette défaite? Ben, je vous dirais qu'évidemment, euh, ce n'est pas le résultat qu'on aurait souhaité. On savait qu'au départ, il n'y avait pas de, de garantie de victoire. Je pense que l'ambassadeur Blanchard en a parlé. C'est une des, des, des courses les plus compétitives. Mais c'était, ça valait l'effort. Je pense que les Canadiens et les Canadiennes qui nous écoutent s'attendaient à ce qu'on mette l'effort pour y arriver, s'attendaient à ce qu'on investisse le temps et l'effort pour avoir une autre tribune. Euh, mais je veux dire aux Canadiens et aux Canadiennes qui nous écoutent ce soir que le Canada est déjà sur plusieurs tribunes, que ce soit le G7, le G20, la francophonie, le Commonwealth. Alors, la position du Canada, la politique étrangère du Canada, bien, on va continuer de la faire valoir sur toutes ces tribunes-là. L'ambassadeur Blanchard le disait, on préside... Par exemple, la, la commission de la reconstruction ici à l'ONU, donc tout le système onusien, on va continuer de s'impliquer. Nous, on veut un, un ONU qui fonctionne. On avait des propositions concrètes de réforme pour euh, le système des Nations unies. On offrait évidemment une plateforme qui tenait en compte, je pense, les grands enjeux de ce jour-là, certainement euh, lorsqu'on est en pleine crise de COVID. Comment on se prépare pour la prochaine crise? Qu'est-ce qu'on fait pour les changements climatiques? Comment on peut faire valoir évidemment l'égalité des genres, réformer le multilatéralisme, parler de la sécurité économique. Écoutez, durant cette crise-là, s'il y a une chose que j'ai entendue des ministres des Affaires étrangères à travers le monde, on parlait de la sécurité alimentaire, on parlait de la sécurité économique, on parlait de la sécurité des chaînes d'approvisionnement. Alors, les enjeux que le Canada a amenés, l'influence que le Canada a développée en s'engageant envers le monde, euh, durant particulièrement les derniers mois, mais aussi les dernières années, tout ça, ça reste. Ça, c'est de l'acquis. Ce sera maintenant à nous, évidemment, euh, de continuer sur toutes les tribunes-là euh, de faire valoir la position du Canada. M. Blanchard. M. Blanchard euh, dit qu'il est satisfait avec cette réponse-là. D'accord. Mais dans ce cas-là, en question de relance, euh, beaucoup de gens ont dit que la candidature du Canada au niveau international, c'est dans le fond, on avait des grands principes mais qu'on ne mettait pas l'argent et les bottes sur le terrain où il fallait. En gros, que le Canada était un grand parleur et un petit faiseur. Est-ce que le résultat d'aujourd'hui, ce n'est pas une confirmation de ça? Moi, ce que je peux vous dire, et c'est une question qui me revient souvent, euh, ce que les gens me parlent, c'est de l'impact du Canada dans le monde. Euh, je peux vous parler, par exemple, de la mission de Minusma où je suis allé au Mali avec le premier ministre. Ce que les gens nous faisaient état, c'est évidemment la contribution unique du Canada. Par exemple, lorsqu'on a lancé l'initiative LC avec plus de femmes dans les contingents de police ou militaires, ce que le chef, le commandant de la force de police de l'ONU me disait là-bas, il me dit, M. Champagne, vous êtes en train de non seulement réformer la façon de faire de la police communautaire, mais vous êtes en train de transformer les Nations unies de la façon que vous faites. Alors, ce que je vous demande, c'est de garder ce contingent-là. 
Moi, c'est ça que j'entends, évidemment, de nos partenaires. Et je vous ferai remarquer que récemment, quand l'ONU nous a demandé de déployer euh, deux appareils pour aider à transporter euh, du matériel médical essentiel, bien, le Canada a répondu présent. C'est ça le Canada dans le monde. Notre engagement vers l'Afrique, je peux vous assurer, va continuer. On est allé visiter l'Afrique, le premier ministre et moi, à plusieurs reprises déjà. L'engagement vers les Caraïbes va continuer. L'engagement vers, évidemment, l'Amérique du Sud, les pays qui sont euh, au Moyen-Orient, nos partenaires européens, tout cet engagement-là va continuer. Et je pense que la voix du Canada résonne aujourd'hui plus parce que ça nous a permis de rebâtir euh, ces alliances-là, de découvrir de nouvelles alliances. Et c'est ça sur lequel on va se focaliser dans les, prochaines, dans les prochains mois dans les prochaines années. Thank you, merci. The next question is from Michelle Carbert from the Global Mail. À vous la parole, please go ahead. Thank you, Minister. Will your government continue to tout that Canada is back on the world stage? Well, I would say it's a matter of fact. Um, you know, the fact that we have engaged with the world, uh, I can assure you, like I said, the Prime Minister probably talked to more than 50 world leaders in the last few weeks. I certainly engaged with about 130 of the foreign minister. It allowed us to listen, uh, to engage, to look forward, because like I said, uh, we knew there was no guarantee of victory, but it was worth the effort. We knew this was not an end in itself. It was a mean, it was another venue, it was another platform to raise this issue. But I can assure you, um, we will continue, whether it's the G7, the G20, our engagement with Venezuela, our engagement in Libya. Uh, you know, countries have asked us to be more engaged than ever during these conversations. It would have been nice uh, to be able to add our voice, amplify their voice uh, through the UN uh, Security Council. We will continue to be as engaged as ever in the UN system. Uh, we chair the Peace Building Commission. Uh, we are engaged in many fronts. So we, that engagement will continue. This was one other place for us to make our voice heard, but rest assured that the voice of Canada uh, will be heard. We will stand by our value and principles as we've done uh, throughout this campaign. And what do you think Lester B. Pearson would have to say about Canada losing twice in a row in its bid for a Security Council seat? I read about him yesterday, actually. And I read about his famous quotes. And I think if Lester B. Pearson was with us today, he would say, keep on going. The voice of Canada matters more than ever. The values and principle that Canada has put forward resonates around the world. Uh, the concept of peace, order, and good government is more needed than ever in this world. So I think if Lester B. Person was with us today, we'd say, keep on going, Canada. Thank you, Merci. The next question is from uh, Ryan Tumorsi from the National Post. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, Minister. Uh, I'm wondering if you think this loss uh, speaks to Canada's foreign policy uh, in a bigger way, that perhaps we don't have the support of our allies, perhaps they're concerned about our weapons sales to Saudi Arabia or that our failure to condemn um, human rights violations in certain countries. Do you think we have a broader problem with our image? Well, like I said, that today is the day to thank the men and women who have invested so much time and effort to uh, put the case forward for Canada over the last four years. There'll be ample time uh, for us to reflect on that. I'll certainly do uh, uh, part of the reflection. We will engage. We will continue. But, you know, uh, as the ambassador said before, some of the things that we have promoted, uh, gender equality. I mean, obviously, Canada will continue to push for gender equality around the world. Multilateralism. I think everyone would agree back home that we need to be more engaged than ever. Uh, multilateralism is part of the DNA of Canadians. Uh, when you think about climate change, I don't think anyone would question that the next big looming crisis is climate change. Uh, whether we talk about economic security, well, obviously, uh, as we're going to COVID, this is going to be front and center. And when you think about peace and security, we've said many times, we need to be careful that what started as a health crisis uh, doesn't turn into a financial or a food crisis, which would bring us to humanitarian crisis. So obviously, the Security Council uh, which is uh, obviously the body to discuss about peace and security. It would have been nice to add Canada's voice to that, but rest assured that we will continue to push because the pillars of our foreign policy, the pillars of our campaign still resonates uh, around the world and we'll continue to put them forward uh, in all venues that we can. And just as a follow-up, the, the vote came 
very close to moving on to a second ballot. Uh, I'm wondering either you or maybe the ambassador can answer. Do you suspect we would have had more support on a second ballot and maybe would have been able to garner a seat if we could have gotten it that far? Well, what I'll tell you, and I'll see if uh, maybe uh, Deputy Ambassador Blair wants to, to comment on that, but, uh, you know, uh, we were ready for all scenarios. Uh, the Ambassador Blanchard said that this is probably one of the most challenging race you can imagine. Everyone would recognize in the UN system that the grouping we're part of, part of is very challenging, uh, and, and we will reflect on that. There's some lessons learned, obviously. We saw the results, uh, but I think with respect to what Canadians would have expected from their leaders and from their team on the ground is to be ready for all scenarios. If we had gone into a second round, we were prepared. Uh, the result is what it is, but I don't know if, uh, Deputy Ambassador, if you want to add a few words to that. Deputy? Thank you, Minister. Thank you very much. And, and before I, I continue to respond, I just want to take a moment and, and say on behalf of the entire team, uh, just uh, pay tribute to the leadership that we have had in this campaign. And I couldn't be more proud to having served under Marc-André Blanchard and, and, uh, and with the team uh, led as well by our, our, our minister and our prime minister and, and our immediate team here uh, in, in New York and the team in Ottawa and across the world. Um, it's been just an honor to, uh, for me to, to serve along your side. And I would just want to say, You've all did a tremendous job, and I've seen the dedication that you've put in for Canada tirelessly, and it was an inspiration to me. Uh, to, with regards to the, to, the, to the question, I would want to say that, uh, as the Minister alluded to, uh, races at, uh, for the Security Council, particularly in our regional group, are very, very unpredictable. Uh, we were talking to, to, uh, to colleagues and friends from different countries yesterday. Uh, no one was able to call it. Uh, it, is, it is very, very difficult, and there's a whole a lot of factors that go into it. And dynamics between rounds and can change. Um, in this case, we weren't, uh, a, you know, we weren't uh, able to see what the second round would have looked like. Uh, but I think that uh, in the end, uh, we did a, 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 as good a job as, as I think was possible to do, and I'm extremely proud of the work that has been done. And as the minister has alluded to, I have seen firsthand how this campaign has enabled us to engage with a wide variety of countries with different concerns and preoccupation around the world, and I think Canada is better for it today. And I was really proud to be part of that exercise. I want to thank you, Mr. Minister, for giving me a chance to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Thank you. The next question, the question question is from David Langreen from Reuters. Please go ahead, Dr. Lattahol. Yeah, good evening, Minister. Good I have a couple of questions. Um, you, you, you keep talking about the contribution to MINUSMA, but it is no secret that Canada's allies were unhappy by the amount of time it took you to decide what mission you were going to contribute to the small number of troops you sent compared to the Prime Minister's promises, and the fact you would not extend the mission even when asked. How much do you regret not having done more in Mali? Well, I would say, David, that's not what I've heard from the UN. Uh, I can assure you, I was in the room with them, and I wish you would be there, but I can assure you no one, uh, uh, people welcome Canada. Uh, they obviously want more of Canada in, in missions we can contribute. We contribute, uh, uh, you know, gladly and what we can when we can. Uh, but what, what, the, what the member in the room were telling me, and I met with the head of the MINUSMA. I met with the head of the military uh, aspect of MINUSMA. I met with the head of the police. They were thanking Canada for making that contribution because they were talking about impact. None of them have talked to me once about numbers. But they were talking, all of them, about the impact, the difference that we're making on the ground, and how proud they were to see men and women uh, wearing the Canadian flag, being part of the mission, uh, telling me stories that women are changing the way the UN is doing, asking us to bring, to, to contribute more women in these contingent because they were seeing the best out of Canada in our troops, and, and they just wanted us to be there for longer. That's what I've heard from the leadership of MINUSMA, and uh, that's what I've heard throughout, and, and I can assure you, I did meet a number of people when I was there, and they were grateful and thankful to the men and women uh, who, who were ready to serve uh, in that mission. And secondly, am I right in understanding that despite the result of this vote, 
you will entertain no fundamental changes in Canadian policy? I mean, I know you won't give details now, but surely people will be reviewing this to figure out what people, other countries liked and what they didn't like. I think you're, you're, you're you know, at a time like that, you have to see the results and we have to reflect, obviously, uh, as Canadians and as leaders, we will have to think uh, certain aspects. We will take our time to do that, to review, to think about lessons learned and, and quite what could have been done better with respect to that particular campaign. But what I was referring to before is that the pillars that we have put forward to me are appealing to uh, uh, the, the people I've engaged around the world. As Ambassador Blanchard said, uh, then you come down to UN politics, which is a fairly complex set of circumstances. Every country would make their choice based on their interests, based on commitments they may have made. But I don't think I would see that as a rejection of the fundamental pillar that we have put forward around climate change, gender equality, multilateralism, economic security, uh, peace and security. I don't think those fundamental pillars that we've put forward are, are very relevant today. Could we have done uh, things differently? That's going to be the subject of our reflection. Um, and certainly we will take these results into account in that reflection. Okay, thank you. Next question is from Mike Blanchfield from Canadian Press. A vous la parole, please go ahead. That's yeah, a question uh, for the minister, I guess. Um, <clears throat> was it a mistake to run in the first place, given that Norway and Ireland had uh, had starts of many, many, many years? I mean, you said yourself you spent four years campaigning, but they've, they've been at it for like close to a decade each. Should, should Canada have waited? Mike, I'm afraid we're we're losing you out. I I don't think I, I could not hear clearly your question if you would not mind repeating it. I think I get the gist of it, but I'm not sure what was the end of it. Should Canada have waited campaign given that Norway and Ireland declared early and were campaigning for many years before Canada? Well, that's certainly something that we will take as a, as a reflection, you know, as part of the lessons learned. Uh, there, there are many things, I think Ambassador Blanchard said it and Deputy Ambassador Bless said it, there are many things that go into a, a campaign like that. Uh, we've invested a lot of time and effort over the last four years. Uh, we'll have a chance to reflect what could have uh, 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 led to that results and certainly the timing of certain um, uh, certain action or decision. We will reflect on all that. But I think tonight, uh, what I think Canadians, they should be very grateful to the men and women in our missions around the world, particularly those who have been uh, investing so much time and effort and emotions and passion. Uh, this is the best that we have in our civil service. These people have been, you, you see the faces, I mean, you can see them, but I can see them, uh, the face of people who have devoted uh, four years of their life to defend Canada, to promote Canada, to talk about Canada, we should celebrate them tonight. This is their evening. And uh, what about uh, some people say, including, um, you know, Senator Peter Beam and others who aren't associated with the campaign, that Canada doesn't belong in uh, WEOG, um, and that maybe, you know, should be in a Latin American Caribbean group. Uh, after all, Mexico didn't have much of a fight today, did it? So, uh, Canada considering uh, moving forward with uh, looking at realigning itself in the UN structure, maybe getting into another group in the future? Well, I mean, there, there's no secret, and I think you said it very well, Mike, that uh, this is probably one of the most competitive grouping that you find in the United Nations. I think it's good for Canadians to understand that, that this was one of the most competitive races. Uh, there was no guarantee of victory, but it was worth the effort. That's why uh, we invested the time and effort to do that. Uh, to your point, I think Canada is going to be reflecting on the type of reforms we need at the UN to make a UN which is focused on people, uh, efficient, effective, and, and certainly that's going to be part of our uh, reflection. We need to think about a lot of things over the next few months uh, and the next few years as Canada, but certainly we recognize that this is one of the most competitive grouping, and we should, uh, as Canadians and as, as um, you know, as, as a foreign policy, and, and our engagement with the UN to reflect on w where Canada best belong uh, in terms of these groupings. And certainly we will be engaged, the Ambassador Blanchard said it, uh, he will walk in the UN uh, tomorrow proud of the work that he and his team have achieved. And I will continue uh, as Foreign Minister of Canada uh, to engage with the UN because we believe that the UN is more needed now than ever. Next Thank question. you. Next question 
is from Amanda Connolly from Global News. I will have the call. Please go ahead. Thank you, Minister, for taking our questions today. Uh, you've been talking a lot about the need to reflect today uh, and, and going forward here, but it's been decades since Canada's had a, an actual foreign policy review akin to what you, your government undertook with the defense policy review. The world has changed a lot since the days of us to be Pearson, and I wonder, um, are you open or considering to a top, a top to bottom comprehensive foreign policy review? I'm, you know, I'm certainly open to think about uh, uh, what we need to do best to promote Canada's abroad uh, and around the world. Uh, like I said, um, Canadians should put in perspective that uh, our voice and our standing in the world is strong, uh, whether it's at the G7, the G20, uh, Commonwealth, La Francophonie, uh, NATO. Uh, Canada is playing a, a crucial part in the international system, uh, defending the international rule-based order. Uh, having trade agreements with more than countries representing 1.2 billion people on, in Europe, in Asia, in North America. So we're very much engaged. So yes, to your point, uh, will we be open to considering different things? Uh, uh, yes, and we should uh, as Canadians, because this was Canada who was running. This was not a project of, of one. This was a project of many and, and Canada. So we will reflect on how best we can project Canada around the world. And just to follow up here as well, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about China too. Do you think that China could have lobbied against uh, Canada at all in this uh, for the votes that we were pursuing, particularly in uh, African and Asian countries? I don't think so. I mean, uh, you know, when when you are here in New York and you talk to the various uh, uh, representatives, uh, you put forward what Canada stands for, and uh, certainly I think that the team here has been. Um, uh, has been doing a, a great work. I don't think it's a time to point finger. It's a time to reflect on, on the great campaign that, that the men and women here uh, have been undergoing. Um, and we will have time to reflect on what could have happened and what might have been the factors. But tonight, um, you know, a few hours after the results, I think uh, the focus is really to thank the men and women who did so much for Canada. I want to thank everybody. Thank you very much for taking part in this press conference. This concludes the press conference. Merci à tous les participants. Ceci met fin à notre conférence de presse. Bonsoir. Merci. Bonne soirée. Merci.